Good morning or good afternoon, depending upon where you are. Uh, this is SK Ghosh. I would like to welcome all of you to our web seminar today. The topic, as you see, is seismic design using structural dynamics. Everything, pretty much everything I'm going to uh, say during the seminar is contained in this publication. Uh, of ours, which we started way back in the UBC days. Uh, we This is one publication we keep updated uh, as the codes and standards change. The book you see before you is based on, as the cover says, 2015 I IBC, AC 710, ACI 318.40. We will not do detailed design of concrete members. So 318.14 will not come into the seminar all that much. Uh, but 2015 IBC and AC 710 are important because uh, by now AC 716 is out and 2018 IBC is out. Uh, so we will have to soon update this publication and this seminar. But uh, uh, that time isn't yet because 2018 IBC has not been adopted by anybody. Uh, the state of California will adopt the code on January 1 of 2020. And to us, that is the date when uh, we will uh, uh, switch to uh, 2018 IBC. Okay, so this seminar is by 2015 IBC and AC 710, uh, very specifically. All the section numbers will be from those uh, uh, documents. When we do seismic design, it can be using the equivalent lateral force procedure that is in ASCE 7 and, and adopted by the IBC, or we can base our design on some kind of a dynamic analysis procedure. Dynamic analysis can be modal response spectrum analysis, which we will describe in great detail during the seminar, or it can be uh, time history or response history analysis. Response history analysis means we subject the base of our structure to uh, recorded earthquake ground motion or artificially generated earthquake ground motion in, in digital forms. So what we feed into the computer are, are acceleration values, ground acceleration at very short time intervals. And using structural dynamics, we compute or trace the response of the structure through the time history. Uh, if we assume that the structure remains elastic throughout its response to the input earthquake ground motion, then it is elastic time history analysis. Uh, elastic time history analysis has its uses, but uh, we design our structures when we design by codes to, to go inelastic in the design earthquake. So if we are doing our analysis under design earthquake ground motion or uh, something higher than that, we need to recognize that, uh, that uh, certain critical regions of our structure will go inelastic. And, and that has to be recognized in the analysis. So that requires the ability to model the behavior of these inelastic regions. And, and when we do that, the response history analysis becomes nonlinear response history analysis. So we have uh, elastic time history analysis and inelastic time history analysis, all of those tools are available. Now, uh, dynamic analysis, whether it is modal response spectrum, elastic time history, or inelastic time history is always permitted to be used. 
the equivalent lateral force procedure, on the other hand, is allowed to be used only under certain restrictions. Uh, and and so, so there are times when AC7 will force us to do dynamic analysis as the basis of design. And that is the subject of this flowchart, which uh, is a, uh, I, I don't want to say a summary. So in AC7, table 12.6-1, uh, title Permitted Analytical Procedures tells us when we must do dynamic analysis and where the, the uh, equivalent lateral force procedure simply shall not be permitted.